Alright guys, what we doing today is we limb hooking on the Pearl River. We are going to postpone our plans to Tom Bigby until probably the middle of next week. Hopefully I get to go. I don't want to be there Memorial Day weekend, so I may wait till the holidays is over. Depends on what things is going, but the water did get down down here, so we fixing to put some limb hooks down here in this river. Now what I've done is I'm just in the upper end of a hole right here and a, it's a slight bend on the upper side of this bend. Now we've got, this is probably about three foot. That lead's just a little higher than I like, but it'll be fine. It'll keep this under the water. Get y'all to watch how I tie this. I tie them so that I can retrieve them easy. I've showed this. Wrap it around. Cross over it on the next wrap. And then above you cross, you pick your main line up and tuck the knot under it. And that ain't going nowhere. I'm trying to catch and make sure that it's... But now, I want live bait for Appaloosas. So we got flopping live bait. We're going to pull it up here. And what I like to do is so that he stays alive, I like to hook him high back here under the back of the fin. Just like so. Drop it in there. Move on to the next one. We'll paddle on up here and we're going to set, I ain't going to set a bunch. We're going to set 10, 15, something like that. So. All right, guys, we finally had to go back and acquire some more bait and charge the camera battery up. Luckily, where we fishing at ain't too far from my house. And guess what? My bait shop's back open. Old Richard Coates texted me and said, hey, man, I got bait. Oh, well, it's good to know. So y'all go by there if you live around here. Check out old Richard Coates. He needs plenty of business that way to keep my bait shop running. So what I did is I saved and saw my stuff and I went and got me some big old shiners from him while I, just to help support my old buddy. We're gonna see if we have any better look for some of these shiners. Look, I got a whole bucket of these things, man. I am going to try to get some good footage of, of tying one of these hooks on when I was putting the other ones out. Oh, my battery died on me. But I'm going to try to get a good shot or two of tying some of these on because the way I tie them on is, is a key to gathering them back up. Y'all going to want to know how I did this. And I'm going to tell y'all, I run up on something up here earlier. I'm paddling upstream right now. A little bit of work. Good for my health. Good exercise. Keeps these bulging muscles. Nah, no, kidding. <laughs> but I ran up on a dead alligator up here. It looked like somebody had shot it, or I don't know, may have gotten a line. I don't know what happened. I didn't go over and fool with it. It was floating and swelled up. Pretty good sized alligator. It ain't far right up here. But this done got over about four or something, so something is knocking all the bait. Off. Every hook that I have checked don't have bait on it anymore. So something's something's stealing my bait off pretty easy. Circle hooks and all. So
that limb pulley. Catfish. That's what it's all about right there, boys. Right over in here. Try to keep y'all in frame, but with the wind and the current <laughs> and the leaves, good lord, y'all ain't never gonna get to see nothing. But I do got to bait this one up. I can get wrong to you. Ain't got no bait on it. So that's what we are doing is a putting big shiners on here. Now the way I hook them, I hook these things just under that fin back there and not down in their guts because I want them to I want them to live. I want them to swim around under the water. You talk about stank. Whew. About an eight foot alligator. We got a hook right over there. What that was might have been a grunt. That is a beautiful old dead tree. I don't know what appeals. I guess because it's so different. It's just kind of laid out over the water here. is a dying and dead ones we're gonna hook through the head. We can still fish with them old people. People, people, people.
Y'all see high tide that? That is a forever more bushcraft knot. Gotta be somewhere. I bet you Dave Canterbury got a book on that knot. You see that? <laughs> Y'all right, old Dave, ask him how he ties his rock to the end of his line. <laughs> See what he comes back with. I bet it's not in his book. <laughs> not that night, anyway. He may have a night. <laughs> ah, it's all about having a good time. This is a little backwater lake right here. I caught a few brim in it earlier. But we ain't had good luck with the catfishes yet. But every time I pull them up, they ain't got no bait. They need circle hooks. Oh, boy, boy. Then I had to dump some creek water. This current and the wind and everything else ain't really cooperating with me. Oh, I need some. I hope to God I don't need a little fresh water in there. Oxygen. Oxygenate. I'm gonna spin around and let y'all look behind me at this lake, how big it is. And when I say big, this is probably, y'all probably got ponds bigger than this, but for down here in this swamp, I caught some brim in it. Pretty good size low hole. I'm about sideways in it now. Now I'm starting to get pointed downstream. You can see all back out there behind me. I'm going to ease on down. I've got some lines right on down here we need to check. Get them baited up. I want everything good and baited right here before dark. Because them catfish will go feeding. Maybe we can catch us a nerd or two. I don't know how they're stealing all my bait though. Not getting Probably gar. Gar probably. We'll blame something. And circle hooks, so you're supposed to not be able to steal your bait off as good. I can't see where they where they make a lot of difference. I hear somebody on their buggy are coming down. As long as they don't come over here and want to palaver with me. For I don't care. Sound like that might be a m m m motorboat. And I'm gonna try to attempt one more time to back up right over here and put a line right here on this limb sticking out in the water and show you how I tie this. So, oh, don't lay them down in the bottom of the boat. And then I'm gonna go past my limb so I can get over here to grab it. See all that me You have to pick that up. Now this limb's dead right out here, but the way I'm tying it, oh lord, two hooks, what in the, what in the, no sir, no, we're not going, we're not going to fight, with it. we're not going to prank with that, ain't got time, that wants to act like that, we'll just lay it down, find us a nerd and had two hooks on it, I don't know what I could do. Probably got it. It's time to make new hooks. We may do a video on that. Uh, these have been used and adjusted and they pieced together. 
after you fish with them a year or two, they get all, all out of sorts. Okay, I'm gonna try to get you around over here, zoomed in on my hand. Okay, break this off. I'm just trying to break stuff off where you can see the limb. I really don't like them that clean because it lets somebody else say, hey, there's a hook, but I use pink hooks so I can find them anyway, so they gonna see it. All right, can you tell what I'm doing? I go over it, I cross over on the top, and then I come on over on that same, like I started over here and I just wrap over. And then the part that that is my line, right here, okay, this loop that I've got picked up, that's my line that goes in the water right there at my thumb. What I do is I take this end and I just take the knot. Whoop, I let it slip out. It, I can tie this a lot faster if I'm not trying to demonstrate. And I've got a video on this knot. But see, my loop is still on the other side. All it does is go across the knot right here. And that pulls tight. That's not going nowhere. You ain't got to loop up over all this stuff. And then when I get ready to get this, I pull that, comes off. Stay with me. Let me retie it. All right. I'm going to just tie it. Just that fast. It's tied. And see how my weight's up out of the water? I don't really particularly like that. But we're going to leave that in there anyway. Just because. Just because y'all helped me tie it. We're going to leave it there. Normally I would bend that limb on over in the water or something. I don't really. Ah. We're going to go fish a little bit now. That limb shaking. That fish. I'll up there and get him. Now we did not bring a dip net with us. We left in a mite of a hurry, I guess you'd call it. And forgot to get one. But not to worry. Oh, grunnel, grunnel people, this, grunnel, I know y'all can't see much, he's hooked on a circle hook. Liam shut the screen deal. You set circle hook. This is a small grunnel for these waters. However, I did hope I'd catch one. Well, let's see. Let's get some of this other paraphernalia out of the way here. Whatever you do, don't be sticking your finger in his mouth. Or you'll get an edge of my casing like you ain't never had. One you won't soon be forgetting. Them hard lessons in life like that, they'll stay with you. Because I stuck my finger in one's mouth one time. That's how come I know to tell y'all not to. Baby grill. Woo! <laughs> Some of my, my, my manners is a dime. Y'all, I didn't know what I had on there. I just, I was happy with a catfish, but 
I'm really tickled with adrenaline. Really, really, really tickled. Really tickled and nothing. I might go put another line right here in this hole. Like right over here on another one of these. Oh, he's down, fella. He's down here under my feet. Flop. We got one of these big ones. We pulled some of them. I had to paddle a long ways up there to check and uh, check my other hooks. And I decided for like four hooks up there, it wasn't worth the paddle. So we fixing them. We're going to fix and get right over him. Right over him. And we're going to tie this in this bush over him somewhere. Some, uh, some of words. Don't know where. Let's see. We need a good strong, one of them strong limbs. Oh, Lord. This one ain't very strong, so since we didn't get strong, we're going to go for flexible. Y'all like flexible? Flexible's nice. I like flexible. Flexible is probably better than strong, really. Oh. Oh. Alright, well. Oh, mos mosquito. I think my, my bu 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 bug is right there. We're going to go put these two in the cooler that we have for the fish. All right, guys, we back down here this morning. Fixing to run these lines and I pull out here and I see two of them tree shaking right now. Y'all stick with, we're gonna try to get these up, but we're gonna, uh, we're gonna pull the lines up as we get the fish off. So kind of watch how, under, how quick it is to just pop that loop the way I tie that pull these off so we're gonna roll them up I have discovered on this trip that we got to redo all these lines they done got too short they ain't no adjustment so we're gonna have a video we'll be watching for that coming up pretty soon about making some new set hooking lines and we'll show you how to make some good ones all right, we got one right here shaking now this one's been pulling pretty good which that is a smaller limb, probably don't mean a lot, but it could mean something. We don't have a dip net with us, so. Roscoe, you better get up to the front. Roscoe, come along with me this morning. Grab that. See how that pop just come right loose. That way, when you're in these paddling and in these limbs, you don't have to fight all of that. We get him in the boat pretty quick. Get up yonder. Get up there, dog. You can stay up that way. I don't want you to get thin. He's hooked pretty good on those circle hook. Pretty decent little catfish. Get a multi tool. Get that right loose. We're just gonna lay them right here in the boat. And what I'm gonna do, y'all like the way I say that a lot, what I'm gonna do. As I roll these up, the way I roll these up is a loop of my last line. I hook that hook on there, and then I just start rolling. Now this one, we actually had two sinkers on it. Weights, whatever you want to call them. All right, now on to the next one. We got one more right up here. Pull it. See if we can get... 
paddled up there before he gets off. Oh. Right directly in front of the boat, right there under them brown looking bushes. And we're gonna be on the other side over here. He's, he quit shaking. I hope he didn't get off. It was shaking when I first got here. Oh, yeah, it's shaking. Y'all, these limbs is hard on the on an old boy camera. I'm gonna just go ahead and pull that. Ooh. Catfish. Small one, but hey. They eat just as good. In fact, probably better if you wanna know the truth. Different line, same deal. Just keep hooking and adding. You see how I cut them notches in that board? Makes it really easy just to spool these up. All right, y'all hang with me. We're gonna pull the rest of these. I think Roscoe's a little nervous about them two catfish laying in a boat. I gotta clean my boat out now. All these limbs getting up in them, it gets my... We got three catfish in the boat. Lost one. On that trot line I made, the weight come off of it. Got all tangled up. But anyway. But I like the way these knots is easy to pop a loose. Because Roscoe don't like being up in them bushes up there too much. Now this one here, I don't know. Looks like something stole the bait off all of them. i tell you another problem. I discovered there were some folks that run some hooks yesterday evening and last night all down in this area. So probably had a little help with some of these I figure so you know how that that goes that's why I don't like to do stuff around where there's a lot of populated areas you got to fight with people over you stuff one of the very reasons I quit turkey hunting if you got on a turkey, somebody found out this, they might pretend to be your friend while they was talking to you, but they'll come. Everybody you ain't looking and they'll go hunt your turkey. They'll do the same thing with your fish hooks. It's hard for a man to ride by a limb shaking like that and not go help himself when there ain't nobody looking and he knows he can get away with it. That being said, there's a fella got a trot line right down there. I pulled it up, looked, he was baited with crawfish, had two catfish on there. The two catfish were still on there when I left. I just wanted to see, and he told me to get them. I talked to him, he said, if you see them on there, get them. I said, no, I'm not gonna, not gonna get nobody else's stuff. I said, I'm too fat to be starving. <laughs> I'm down here for the peace of mind. You see all three of these? No bait. That's our last hook. We're getting them pulled up. Folks, I have got to go make some pottery. We're going to get this last one right here rolled up on the line. And we're going to go load this canoe up and we're going to head on to the house. Look, thank y'all for watching my videos coming to you from down here in the Pearl River Swamp. We're on the Nanawoya Wildlife Refuge or WMA. Uh, but thank y'all for watching my videos. We'll see y'all next time on Spirit of the Outdoors. Y'all have a good one.